Hello, we are watching the news broadcast today and following today's headlines. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dũng works with Phú Quốc Island District on a plan to transform it into a special administrative economic zone. Deputy Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc pays New Year visits to Ho Chi Minh City at Bishop and General Confederation Evangelical Churches of Vietnam. Vietnam begs the countries in the Gulf of Thailand in stepping up their cooperation, especially in joint patrols and search and rescue exercises. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dũng has directed the Mekong Delta province of Kiên Giang to complete a plan to transform Phu Quốc Island into a special administrative economic zone. He worked with the local authorities on the plan on December 15. Prime Minister Dũng asked the Phu Quốc District authorities to make full use of its advantages and potential, especially those in aquaculture breeding, fishery, tourism, trade and agriculture, to serve socio-economic development. Dũng noted that Kiên Province and Phu Quốc Island District in particular should increase infrastructure development investment, especially in transport, electricity and fresh water supply. Phú Quốc should also take strong measures to protect the environment and forests, which is important to tourism development, Zoom added. The island has made positive changes since the Prime Minister's decision first became operational eight years ago. Annual GDP grew by 22% on average, and annual per capita income was estimated at 50 million Vietnam dollars. The number of tourists to the district grew by 13% each year. The same day, Prime Minister Zoom cut the ribbon to inaugurate Phu Quốc International Airport in Zoom Tô Commune. Addressing the event, he asked the Airport's Corporation of Vietnam to complete other airport facilities to ensure it meets international standards. The airport, which costs 3 trillion Vietnam dollars to view, is the first of its kind entirely funded by domestic business. It covers an area of 900 hectares and can cater for 2.6 million passengers a year. Replacing the local airport in Dương Đồng Tàu, the new airport can handle Boeing 777s, Boeing 747-400 and similar aircraft. The office of President Chung Tân Sang announced nine laws, three resolutions and one ordinance on the 14th. We have more. The announced legal documents include amended laws on electric city, tax management, anti-corruption, lawyers and personal income tax, and new laws on publishing, capital, cooperatives and national reserves. The amended law on electric city stipulates that retail electric rates will be determined by the market but adjusted if necessary by the government. The amended law on anti-corruption states that the Communist Party will regulate the operations of the Central Steering Committee on anti-corruption and improves the transparency of listing assets. The law on publishing continues to ban private ownership of publishing houses. The law on capital regulates special mechanisms for capital concerning planning, architecture and construction. The law on national reserves regulates the use of national reserves in order to cope with natural disasters and epidemics or national security. The Deputy Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc paid a New Year visit to Archbishop of Ho Chi Minh City, Cardinal Phạm Minh Munt, on December 14th. He was accompanied by Phạm Dung, head of the government's committee for religious affairs and the city's leaders. Deputy Prime Minister Phúc has shown a high regard for the contributions that the Archbishop has made to the Catholic Church and the local Catholic community. He said the party and state have always recognized the services religious followers in general and the Catholics in particular have devoted to the national building and defense. Cardinal Mun extended a Merry Christmas greeting to all people, pledging to work with other religious and non-religious people in building the city and the country peacefully. The same day, Deputy Prime Minister Phuc also visited the General Confederation Evangelical Churches of Vietnam's southern region. 
Fub expressed he hopes that Protestants will continuously uphold the spirit of solidarity and unity to live their lives to the full, promote the country's economic development, and strengthen the national great unity bloc. Vice President of the Senate of Thailand, Surajai Limbolachai, suggested Ho Chi Minh City and Bangkok to working together to tackle common social problems like traffic congestion, environmental pollution, and flooding. The Thai officials met with chairwoman of Ho Chi Minh City People's Council Nguyen Thi Quyết Tâm on December 14 during his working visit to Vietnam. He wished for an increase in exchange of visits at both legislative and local levels between the two countries. For her part, Tham said the relations between Vietnam and Thailand are growing significantly, especially after the recent visit to Thailand by National Assembly Chairman Nguyen Sinh Hung. She said she hopes that the Senate of Thailand will create favorable conditions for localities of Thailand and Ho Chi Minh City to exchange delegations and experience on issues of mutual concern. Vietnam backs their countries in the Gulf of Thailand in stepping up their cooperation, especially in joint battles, search and rescue exercises, and information sharing. It voiced these at the Gulf of Thailand Second Commanders Forum in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, on the 7th, 12th, and 13th. The forum brought together nearly 50 delegates from maritime enforcement bodies of Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam and the Deputy Chief of U.S. Mission to Malaysia, Lee McClenney, the event's sponsoring partner. Discussions at the event focused on concrete cooperation mechanisms to deal with the four major threats in the regional waters, smuggling, illegal fishing, armed piracy and pollution. Colonel Nguyen Quang Dap, General Director of the Vietnam Maritime Police, proposed setting up a hotline to deal with unforeseen incidents at sea while stepping up practical cooperation in capacity building, personnel training and disaster response. The International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, has made a number of recommendations, suggestions and proposals to develop Vietnam's nuclear infrastructure. The agencies had 10 working days with Vietnamese relevant agencies for these proposals. At the working sections with experts from the Ministry of Science and Technology and other relevant agencies, IAEA experts discussed the content of uniting its seals in the agency in the agency approved nuclear infrastructure development. They focused on seven key issues relating to nuclear development that require Vietnam's consideration, including legal basis, regulations, human resource development, and financial and budget management. It's very openly and uh, very cooperative manner, and we completed our mission in time. And uh, today, after the, the closing meeting, will deliver the uh, preliminary draft report and uh, we will polish and edit some of the uh, report and uh, we'll provide Vietnam the draft report by mid-January and then Vietnam needs to provide us feedback by mid-February. Experts from both IAEA and Vietnam researched the true conditions in Vietnam and took in the experience of other countries to make the best proposals. According to IAEA's proposals, Vietnam needs to pay attention to a legal basis. The country should also focus on improving legal documents, regulations and framework. The country should also focus on improving legal documents, regulations and frameworks. The agency also suggested us pay due attention to human human resources development and issues related to finance and the state budget. IAEA's review will be the basis of Vietnam's specific plans on its future nuclear sector. Vietnam is now able to produce 10 out of the 11th vaccines used in the expanded immunization program for children. It was announced by Health Deputy Minister Nguyen Thanh Long on December 14th. In the last 25 years, Vietnam has built a widespread vaccination network from central to grassroots levels, with 90% of children aged under 12 months inoculated. The successful implementation has seen fatalities of children under 5 years old fall considerably. Vietnam eradicated polio and tetanus in 2000 and 2005 respectively, and the country is moving towards wiping out measles.
Since 2006, there have been no hoof cough fatalities and all health staff hold qualifications in vaccination safety. However, the program still faces challenges, including a shortage of medical staff measuring in immunizations in the grassroots level, inadequate vaccine supply in some localities, reduced funds and declining international aid, as well as poor public awareness of the importance of vaccination. According to the National Institute of Hygiene and Epidemiology, vaccines against avian influenza virus IH5N1 are in the last pilot stage. If successful, they will be made available on a large scale. And we come to the end of our news today. Thanks for joining us, and goodbye for now.